Welcome to Radio 64. Welcome to Radio 64, video game music remix radio. I'm your host, Eric Mickles, also known online as Dusk vs. Tweak. Radio 64 is part of the Radio Meanwhile network. Visit RadioMeanwhile.com for more information about this and other great podcasts. You can find past episodes of Radio 64 on iTunes, Spotify, SoundCloud, and YouTube. And thank you to WRAQ 92.7 FM in Angelica, New York for hosting us every Monday at 6 p.m. That song that opened the show was called Facility Hacker Mix by Scott Peoples. That was originally from GoldenEye 007 for the Nintendo 64. That's the Facility music, if uh, if you didn't know. The original source is by Graham Norgate, 
Grant Kirkhope and Robert Beanlin. Uh, I guess now it feels a little bit uh, dated, but I think the song came out in 2000, and it made more sense to have that that landline sound, to have that kind of AOL startup sound as you're logging in online. You know, 19 years later after this remix came out, now it's it's quaint. I love how Scott Peoples uses the the alarm that goes on in the, fa- the facility level of GoldenEye and turns it into part of the soundtrack because, I mean, <laughs> some of the ways I played those levels, that alarm was going from the beginning to the end. So it really did become just part of that soundscape. I, I think I really like how uh, this track, Facility Hacker Mix, uses that fade out because it's, it's just kind of cool. You can just kind of imagine that during the song, everything's blowing up, everything's going to hell, James Bond has destroyed this facility, and now, <laughs> and now that the song just kind of peters out as Bond leaves the area and everything's just kind of burning to the ground. He, he's done his damage. He, he's, the, uh, he's the Rambo of the spy world. And <laughs> GoldenEye is one of, I'm going to get a real bitter here now. GoldenEye on the Nintendo 64 is one of those games I felt like I was so good at. And, you know, now you see people who are just killing it at Fortnite and getting millions of viewers and all this stuff on Twitch and stuff. And I'm just like, why couldn't that have been a thing when I was playing GoldenEye on the 64? I was probably real bad compared to some of the, the best players out there. But, you know, I get a little bitter thinking about it. I'm not a Mega Man expert. I... I enjoy the games that I have played, mainly <laughs> mainly Mega Man 2, but I try to be pretty open to all the game soundtracks because I, I found a lot of gems throughout uh, each series, even if it's not, you know, from the classic, the all-time classic that is Mega Man 2. So this one is from Mega Man 4. Now, the original track was the Dust Man stage, and that was originally by Mine Fuji. This is an Am I Evil track from OC Remix. It's called Let There Be Light by Am I Evil from ocremix.org. The song actually has kind of a personal connection to myself because uh, I took a digital imaging class, a Photoshop class basically in college, and we had to pick a song and then do some uh, photo projects to it. And this song really struck me and I just, I I couldn't shake this like post-apocalyptic feel. So I just kind of started photoshopping a bunch of pictures to create this, this apocalyptic wasteland throughout cities and everything. Just people by themselves walking slowly through the remnants of civilization. And this was the music that put me in that spot. This track, it really evokes this kind of lonely, dark feeling. I mean, it's called, you know, Let There Be Light. And I think you kind of have to struggle to see it through that song. I think there's even pieces of this that remind me of like the Terminator soundtrack, the, the Terminator 1 and 2 theme. So this is Let There Be Light by Am I Evil from ocremix.org. Thank you. 
That was Let There Be Light by Am I Evil from ocremix.org. We have our required Final Fantasy track of the episode here now with Final Fantasy X. This is called Twilight of Ivory by Palpable. Originally, it was the track People of the North Pole. Uh, and Final Fantasy X's soundtrack was by Junya Kono, Masashi Himuzu, and Nobu Yumatsu. People of the North Pole was always a track that kind of left you cold. I feel like one of the more atmospheric pieces of Final Fantasy X, which has a fantastic soundtrack, but I definitely think People of the North Pole really uh, nails that cold, that cold atmosphere, that struggling quest feel. Twilight of Ivory takes people in the north, and it takes, it turns it into just a really, uh, kind of a cool electronica, uh, mellow piece. There's some pieces of this song that are a bit, a bit more energetic, and then kind of have a more dance quality. The whole track itself, this relaxing piece with a very chill vibe, one that has a lot of interesting textures throughout, and the track itself is really just kind of carried by this excellent piano work. So this is Twilight of Ivory by Palpable from ocremix.org from the game Final Fantasy X.
That was Twilight of Ivory by Palpable from ocremix.org. Again, from the game Final Fantasy X. I actually, a friend gifted me Final Fantasy X and Final Fantasy X 2 on Steam, uh, the HD remasters or the HD versions. And Final Fantasy X is definitely one that I want to replay. My wife wants to play it, so we just need to sit down and go through it. And also, I never finished Final Fantasy X 2. Uh, you know, it's only recently that I realized how much I love the Super Mario Bros. 2 soundtrack. Obviously, Super Mario Bros. 1 has the, you know, the songs that are Mario, and Super Mario 3 is, you know, a lot of people's favorite Mario game. But Mario 2, I, I've just learned to really appreciate just the, the quirkiness and the left turn that the game and the soundtrack take from the original series. You know, it's obviously not originally a Mario game. It was reskinned with the Mario characters. But the music, it just sounds like no other game that I can think of, and certainly no other Mario game. Because this is the, the player select theme by Koji Kondo being remixed. It's called Shiitake Kingdom by FX Snowy. It uses a lot of different Asian in instruments throughout. On the site, he says it's the... Uh, Uru, the Chinese Guzang, the Japanese Koto, the Chinese Rune Moon guitar. So he, he's using a lot of different instruments. And what I like about it is that the player select theme from Mario 2, it's still being represented in, in all its energy and its quirkiness, but it's, it's being performed with all these different instruments to add even more personality onto an already personable track. This is Shiitake Kingdom by FX Snowy from ocremix.org. Shiitake Kingdom by FX Snowy from ocremix.org. <laughs> that song's just a lot of fun. It's quick, it zooms right by, but it's got personality to spare. And plus, Super Mario Bros. 2, it gave us Shy Guy. I love my Shy Guy. This track is from the album from Overclocked Remix called 25 Year Legend, a Legend of Zelda indie game composer tribute. Uh, one of the albums from Overclocked Remix. This is from The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker. A couple of tracks are being mixed here. You got the Kakariko Village, you got the Oceans track, you got the title theme, and you got Zelda's theme by Koji Kondo, but also Kajimi Wakai, Kentai Nagata, and Turu Minigishi. This track is called Hoi Small Fry! Exclamation mark. 
by Hyperduck Soundworks. It's a very jovial piece. It has that recorder going throughout the whole song. It's got that recorder working. It's got maybe a violin, maybe a fiddle. I can't tell. <laughs> you know, I'm sorry. It definitely creates this kind of happy, seafaring sound that's akin to, you know, how you feel while you're playing the Wind Waker. And then those, uh, those vocals come in and it becomes a swaying, almost party mix. Here is Hoy Small Fry! Exclamation mark, by Hyperduck Soundworks from ocremix.org. Small Fry by Hyperduck Soundworks from ocremix.org. Up next is a track from the game The Elder Scroll 3, Morrowind. The track here is the Morrowind title. It's called, what? The Morrowind title actually has a name, Nirvar Rising. Huh, I just learned something. Uh, by Jeremy Soule. I tried to play a little bit of Morrowind when I was younger. I just had no direction. Uh, you, you put me in an open world with no direction, I'm, I'm just lost. You gotta give me a little bit 
uh, you got to give me a quest or a goal right out of the gate. Otherwise, uh, I just wander into the woods, get killed, and I never come back. So my apologies to Morrowind. This track is called Fear Not by Frey. It's this electronic piano piece that has a retro feel throughout. But around the four minute mark, the song kind of slows down and brings in the piano. Kind of seems like it's about to fade out. But then around the four and a half, five minute mark, it, it gets a bit chirpier. The synth in the song, it, it's, it's all the right notes and all the right effects that just kind of bubble up. And it becomes this kind of hopeful 80s inspirational piece as, as the rest of the instruments drop out while the synth is still there. Uh, a lot of my love for this song is just how well Frey nails the ending for this track. So this is Fear Not by Frey from the game Elder Scroll 3 Morwin from ocremix.org.
was Fear Not by Frey from ocremix.org from the game Elder Scroll 3 Morrowind. Like uh, many people, I got my Disney Plus account uh, because I'm just happily bang along with the rest of the sheep until we are led over the cliff. Uh, until then, I guess I'll enjoy being able to watch DuckTales whenever I can. This track is from the game DuckTales. Uh, specifically Control Room and The Moon by Hiroshigi Tanamura. Now this is called Heart and the Duck Up by Norg, and it is a, an electric rock piece of that track if there ever was one. And brings in a lot of good pieces of the original DuckTales cartoon theme. You know, I said it's an electric guitar piece, but those drums are also working it throughout this song. They are heavy, they are in your face, but I don't think the electric guitar ever gives up the song. The Moon theme, you, you know, is one of the great tracks from, uh, from video games, especially the the original Nintendo, and I think the Moon theme was even used in the new DuckTales cartoon that's on. Uh, one of the characters sings it to an alien baby and adds these words, and it, it it's really a it was really a cool. I don't, I don't want to say deep cut because the Moon theme is you know so popular, but it it, it kind of was. It was this really cool deep cut to bring into the into the cartoon. This is Harden the Duck Up by Norg from OCRemix.org from the game DuckTales.
That was Harden the Duck Up by Norg from ocremix.org from the Nintendo Entertainment System game DuckTales. Uh, I've I think I've mentioned before that I didn't understand Echo the Dolphin when I played it as a kid. I still don't. I think I recently just turned on the first Echo the Dolphin. I was like, I don't know where to go. So I really have to just sit down, play Echo the Dolphin, and figure out what I'm supposed to do. But the graphics actually made my wife kind of sick, the, the speed and everything of it all. But this is from Echo the Tides of Time. A lot of people worked on that set. Uh, Andres Magari, Andy Armour, Adelie Dobos, and David Jaffalosa. And this is using the songs Heart of the Giant and Two Tides. Because this song is by Halk, it's a chiptune piece, a bit more chill than uh, some of his more boppy pieces. And it's really the main theme that's playing throughout that. That, that piece that just that keeps going up and down, up and down. So it creates a serene sound that I actually find a little creepy as well. So this is another seascape by Helk from ocremix.org from the game Echo the Tides of Time. <laughs>
That was another Seascape by Helk from ocremix.org from the game Echo, The Tides of Time. I got into a kick a couple of years ago where I was just going through a bunch of indie games that I hadn't played, such as uh, To the Moon, Inside, Braid, and Bastion. Bastion's soundtrack was just kind of knocked me over. It was so good. It reminded me, the just that acoustic Western vibe, reminded me a lot of the show Firefly in its soundtrack. This The song that's being remixed here is called Setting Sail, Coming Home, the end theme. That was originally by Darren Corb, and this is actually an acapella version of that track. And who's who's doing acapella here? You got Andrew McLaren, David Lane, Dorothy Hayden, Ryan Billington, and Square Law. So Bastion's end theme had lyrics, so they're just taking those lyrics and taking out all that acoustic guitar and drums, and it's, it's all, you know, it's acapella, it's all just voice. This is called A Kid Pella, and I think it works. I think it makes me think you chose the kind of... There's two endings you can get in Bastion. I thought I picked the best ending, and, and I kind of feel like this song, because it's it, it's a bit sadder, I think maybe they picked the uh, the ending I find depressing anyways. I See, I can't. I don't want to spoil the game with the endings, but I picked the slightly more hopeful ending. I guess it's kind of a Rorschach test, because, uh, you know, which ending am I really talking about when I say hopeful? But yeah, Bastion, it's it's not the most complicated game in the world, It's but it's, it's a gorgeous game, and the soundtrack is fantastic, and this is called A Kid Pella. Uh, oh, because the game calls the character a kid. Boy, been listening to this track for a while. Just put that together. All right, A Kid Pella by Andrew McLaren, David Lane, Dorothy Hayden, Ryan Billington, Square Law from ocremix.org from the game Bastion. I set my sail, fly the wind it will take me back to my home sweet home lie on my back clouds are making way for me i am coming home sweet home i see your star Lauren, David Lane, Dorothy Hayden, Ryan Billington, Square Law, from OCRoofs.org, from the game Bastion. Yeah, that was that was pretty different from any song we've played before, but I think where sometimes I could find a cappella a little obnoxious, because that song's a little shorter, I don't think it overstays his welcome, and I think it succeeds in what they were trying to do. All right, let's... Oh, man, I did it again! So last episode, I think I picked three songs that had the same artist and I try not to and I don't know how I didn't do this. Hyperduck Soundworks who gave us that Wind Waker theme. Uh I guess I picked another track by him. How how is that happening? I anyway. This is a this is a song from Chrono Trigger from the track Chrono Trigger. Uh and that game had Nobuyu Matsu, Noriko Matsuda and 
Yasunori Mitsada working on that. This takes the Chrono Trigger track, the Chrono Trigger theme from the game and turns it into this 80s pop. You know, the the drums and the synthesizer throughout the song are, are pure 80s. And then that there's that sound that is either a saxophone or just a synth that sounds like a real good saxophone to me. It's just such a poppy piece with that with that 80s aesthetic throughout. I think actually pairs really well with Chrono Trigger. So this is Punk Hairdo Kid by Hyperduck Soundworks from ocremix.org from the game Chrono Trigger. That was Punk Hairdo Kid by Hyperduck Soundworks from ocremix.org from the game Chrono Trigger. One of the best JRPGs out there, and I don't think there's a single bad track on that soundtrack. Well, that is the show. I have been your host, Eric Mickles. Again, I'm known online as Dust vs. Tweak. Thank you for listening to this episode of Radio 64, Video Game Music Remix Radio. Again, Radio 64 is part of the Radio Meanwhile Network. You can visit RadioMeanwhile.com for more information about this and other great podcasts. Find past episodes of Radio 64 on iTunes, Spotify, SoundCloud, and YouTube. And again, thank you to WRAQ 92.7 FM in Angelica, New York, for hosting us every Monday at 6 p.m. 
Again, if you have any games you'd like to hear tracks from, any remixes you'd like to hear, please let me know on Twitter or on YouTube or any of those uh, sites you can find us, because I would love to play any requested tracks on this, on this show. So, thank you for listening, and see you next time.